an update with the latest on the restoration of the van. Since I put out the last video on work on the van, um, which wasn't really restoration back then, it was more just upkeep and uh, fixing things here and there to just try to get the van going. I've had so many messages on people uh, reaching out with either tips of things to do or sharing their own stories when they were restoring their vans or uh, camping vehicles and so many kind messages on things to look for, what types of parts might work best or what approach to take for certain things or what might be wrong with some of the things I mentioned. And now I think it's been almost a year since uh, I made that video. And so I thought I'd give a recount of the things that have happened because on one hand, I always knew I wanted to try to make the van more reliable. On the other, because of all the lockdowns and everything that was going on, I ended up being able to spend more time than I expected kind of all at once. I expected to do all this work all along because my ultimate plan is can I get this older van to be not as reliable as a newer vehicle. Obviously, that's really hard to do, but can I either fix or replace as many components as possible mechanically to keep it so that it's sound enough that it can be reliable while I'm able to keep up with all of the things that might go wrong? Because these vans are quite popular, there's many companies that are making their own versions of its systems. And then you could update those and end up having a little bit more of that reliability. So what I'll say is this, on one hand, I knew what I was getting into. On the other hand, I wasn't expecting just how many things that would domino once I got into one small project. So the van stayed on jack stands pretty much from January all the way until I believe August. Um, while every time I went into a different system, I ended up either tearing it down completely and then deciding that line of what can be salvaged, what can be fixed versus what should be replaced so that hopefully the van can be a little more dependable. So let me take you down the rabbit hole of how just doing the brakes ended up sparking the entire restoration of the van. So I got pads and all the normal wear and tear pieces for the brakes and then as soon as I started taking things apart I realized just how deteriorated most of the stuff was. The cylinders were leaking, the backing plate was completely rusted through and the springs were not attached to anything. I was going to change the flexible brake lines and then as I examined the system all of the hard lines were really rusted as well. At that point since I was there as I mentioned before I decided okay you know what brakes number one most important thing so I just overhauled most of the braking system, um, all new, all new flexible lines, all new hard lines. And as I started going through the van to lay out the new system, I started taking down other things and realizing just in what bad conditions those things were. So for example, this van started out up in Canada. So it came with the system to warm up on cold days. So because I'm in warmer climate now, I wanted to just get rid of that. Also, if I want to, there's other safer ways of warming up the van. I didn't want that system that that used to be tied into the gas lines. And I was told by the previous owner that all of the gas lines had been uh, updated. That's something very important with these older vans. Uh, our gas uh, dissolves. The, those lines as at the same time if they're the original gas lines they will be hard and brittle if you look up accidents where these vans burn down it's a real thing that happens because sometimes people don't update the the gas lines and i was going under the assumption that they had been changed but but i realized that many of the gas lines that were hard to get to for example, the ones that were connected to this heater that I thought was completely disconnected were still there with original gas lines. So those parts of the system were just waiting to fail and I had no idea. So I was so glad at, at that point when I started to see all these little things that that I thought were safe and were OK to be with, I just thought, OK, you know what? I'm going to take this time. We're in lockdown and we can't really go anywhere. I'm just going to address as many of these as possible. So I eliminated the heater. I redid all of the gas lines throughout the entire van. And while I was doing that, while I was there, um, I realized that the evaporation tanks in the front, which are crucial to the system, 
one of them had a huge crack and same thing went with the lines that came off of it now with my van having hesitation and sometimes not working in the rain one of the possibilities was water getting up into these um, evaporation tanks that are in the front wheel wells and at the time that i was doing this the only thing available were these amazing metal versions so i replaced those now they finally now that i'm pretty much done with everything they finally came out with new pla cheap plastic versions that i could have easily swapped out but that's okay i'm happy with the aluminum ones they're gonna last they're the van might rust to the ground but all of the aluminum parts that i have changed will continue living forever and since i was doing that i took out the gas tank uh, and went through it and there was quite a bit of rust on that as well so i just ended up replacing the gas tank as well then i went into the cooling system uh the um, there's there's these long either metal or plastic pipes depending on what year your van is and as i and as i was taking things apart i could see that they were kind of fall they were starting to fall apart at the edges as well and this is something that goes uh the length of the floor underneath and since i had since I was there, since I had the gas tank out, I thought, all right, I can replace uh, those pipes. But then as I started doing that, I found many of the hoses that clearly were still original and were super and were super squishy and really looked like they were going to be failing at some point, uh, which is a very, very common thing. It's, it, it's hard to keep track of what maybe has been changed and what hasn't, because usually if you're just fixing whatever breaks, you might have many original parts still in there. And at that point I thought, since I'm doing this, uh, I ended up replacing uh, most of the cooling system throughout the van. And I knew I was having problems with cooling and a well-known issue is the expansion tank uh, for the cooling system in these vans. It uses, uh, it uses a cap that very often will go bad uh you need pressure you need it has a very specific pressure valve it can go bad and it can cause symptoms it seems like you have a problem with your head gaskets which was something that i was sure i probably had a problem with so i was going to already go down that list of addressing everything that could maybe point to a head gasket before i got to the head gaskets and since I was already doing the evaporation tanks, I decided to also take care of doing the expansion tank as well. Tied with that, when I was doing all of the cooling, I also changed the radiator. I put in also a water gauge so that I can, a water temperature gauge so that I can keep track of that coolant temperature. Now, as I got started with the brakes, I also knew that one or two of the CVs on one side were going bad because as I turned in one direction, you could hear a, a clunking noise in a very specific way that where the ball bearings are bumping over a surface that is not flat in the CV. Uh, so I knew that was definitely gonna be something I needed to look into. I had two cheap, super crappy CVs and, one, and both of them were failing. And then funny enough, the other two are definitely original and they're in better shape than whatever the replacement ones were with really cheap parts. That's something that's also uh, that you can find when you hear about restorations here is in a lot of cases, the original parts are way, way better than the replacement parts. So what I ended up doing is I just got replacements for all four CVs and I'm keeping the original ones as my spares one of the axles was still in good condition i'm pretty sure that was the original one but the replacement one was not looking good so then i replaced that as well and now cvs axles boots everything seemed to be in good condition <clears throat> the trailing arms have a base a metal base to which the the spring can rest on the caps on the the caps on these bases were pretty much just hanging on by a thread i could move them by hand those were going to fail any moment now they now they provide those metal uh caps by themselves if you want to just reuse your old trailing arms you can get those removed and new ones um welded on but as i examined the rest of my trailing arms they also were in bad condition so i ended up changing the trailing arms another thing i realized that i had no idea was that this van had been lowered i thought things looked a little weird but i thought just the springs were tired no what they used was a lowering kit i just wanted it to sit at a comfortable ride height and i did notice that when it was lowered every little bump 
made the whole van shake. So I just went with a regular set of springs. Uh, I had to change the shocks because they were absolutely shot. I could pull them open and close by hand easily. I was able to rebuild the entire front suspension. Um, I was going to see if the front steering rack was still good enough. It was also, it was easier and cheaper to just replace the entire system rather than go piece by piece. Also just the reliability issue that that I'm starting with new components versus what parts are still original, what parts might fail this way. I just know it's a blank slate. Steering, good to go. Brakes, good to go. Cooling, good to go. So once I had tackled all that stuff, at that point I decided, okay, it's time to start cleaning some of the engine elements that either I see could be failing at some point soon or it might be a problem. So, so I started redoing all of the electrical components in terms of any terminals like, that look like might be falling apart, I redid. Uh, and then as I started playing around in the engine, I realized how many components straight up were not even bolted down, nuts were missing all over the place. I changed as many hoses as possible. There were a lot of things, there were a lot of those that were cracking all of the um, all of the vacuum lines while the plastic ones were just fine the connecting little um soft lines were all cracking and old so i changed those uh and then i also had many parts that i had bought in case they would fail and since i was taking a lot of them apart i figured i'd bolt on as many new parts as possible and then keep the keep whatever i took off as my spares so for example the water pump brand new um new thermostat that i cleaned the entire thermostat housing i had to be careful when i was taking a lot of these things apart many of these bolts are very old tired and they could break easily thankfully most of the stuff held up okay except for most of the header bolts a lot of them broke but thankfully i was able to weld nuts to any of those that had broken off and they all came off uh so that was pretty awesome to do that i knew i was going to change the entire exhaust system this was one of the first things i bought more than a year ago it had been sitting in a box and I didn't do anything with it because I knew that at some point I'd probably be addressing the possibility of having to do those head gaskets. Since I had most of the engine apart anyway at this point I thought you know what I have the kit to replace the head gaskets let's just go for it and I'm so glad I did because as I took the heads off all of those seals were just destroyed. There was so much gunk. The O-rings were shredded. It really seemed like there was no way that this was keeping oil and coolant completely apart from each other. This had to be done at some point. And I was thinking of maybe just doing the top, the top of the jugs and leaving the inner ones off. But one of the jugs was just completely stuck and came out with one of the heads. And once you do that, you need to take it all apart and then put it back together. But that really was a blessing because at that point I cleaned up the jugs, I cleaned up the pistons, uh, the heads, I tried cleaning. I, then I realized one of them was really pitted and had some problems. Also, the valves were not the same <laughs> across the same head. They had replaced and mixed matched valves. And at that point, I decided if I'm going to get one new head, I'm just going to do both and then keep the good one as my spare. That way I can try to not have to take the engine apart anytime soon. I know at some point I'm probably going to have to get in there and change the rods and the bearings. Uh, it's an old motor. It has a lot of miles. And while I have paperwork that it was rebuilt, I'll bet you they only rebuild the top end, not the bottom stuff. And when things get old and tired, uh, that's one of the issues you end up having is low oil pressure at high temperatures for long periods of time because those bearings uh, get worn, everything is worn. So now that I feel a lot more comfortable with this engine and I know I can take it apart and put it back together, uh, I might at some point, if I if I really see I'm having problems with low, low oil pressure uh, at extended drive periods uh i might go in there and just rebuild it from the bottom up again and by the way the manual was just so important and helpful in this as well as the online forums the samba uh, i can't thank uh the members from that forum enough so much amazing information that i was able to use to help me step by step figure out how to 
take things apart, put them back together. I even honed the jugs. Uh, I know that I probably didn't do an amazing job, but from how it was, cleaning things up, honing them, I was able to get that crisscross pattern in it that I think looks good enough, at least to get me around town and uh, and we'll see how long it lasts. And then someday I need to change the engine for something else. I don't know if I would do a, a Subaru conversion or if I would just try to get another case like this. Maybe I might even enjoy rebuilding it myself and just working on this one. Once the whole engine was put together, I really was terrified that it wouldn't even crank. And then it started on the first try. I kid you not. It started and it idled right at 1K. It was crazy. I was freaking out. I had my wife was standing behind the van with a fire extinguisher just in case. Oh, another thing I did is updated. I updated also the fuel rails. Those were getting ready to let go. Uh, the old ones had plastic and then metal caps and they were rusting. And I really think they could have fallen apart anytime. And I also replaced the fuel injectors uh with a new set that really looked fantastic and then of course lots of other maintenance things like air filter obviously fuel fuel pump fuel filter oil filter and this this time because i put in uh an oil pressure gauge and oil temperature gauge i used uh the sandwich adapter and then i ended up having to use a smaller oil filter so that it can fit um with the exhaust nearby uh, I ran all those lines and now I have three extra gauges and it's been fantastic having those numbers. And on one hand, I know that I can't become glued to their numbers. None of these gauges are really going to be that accurate. But what I really would like is to use the gauges as uh, understanding how the engine and uh, the systems behave so that I can watch for patterns, but not for specific numbers. Also the system for cooling is very specific where you can't really watch the numbers without knowing where your gauge is in relation to what the gauge is telling you but so far everything has been working out okay lots of little things happened where for example my distributor the the hall sender uh there's a pigtail that comes off of it and some of those wires were falling apart and it kept dying on me. That definitely could have been one of the issues I was having where the engine does move around quite a bit. And if one of those cables that is sending energy in there, uh, it was hanging on by a thread. So if it wasn't making the connection, it would just die. So a lot of these connections, I just took everything out and redid them, put new wires in there. Uh, and all of a sudden, little by little, there were less and less and less issues. So that was fantastic. I put in three different kill switches so that I could easily, if anything were to happen, kill the batteries as well as being able to kill other parts of the engines. Uh, I got the rear, I got the rear lights working uh, and now they turn on along with the rear view camera. I did a very quick home alignment just so that I could get around uh, and testing as soon as I can. I'm going to bring it into a shop to do a true alignment on the van. But between the new suspension system as well as all new bu bushings and all the old parts that I cleaned up for the front suspension, it just it feels like a different vehicle. And I knew it would, but I just can't believe what difference it makes in having all new either restored or new components. So let's see other things that I've added, new fog lights and regular running lights. I just wanted to have a little more. I changed the headlights. The cooling system had a problem. See, this is one of those things where previous owners will do things and you have no idea what they have done. They played around with the system that automatically turns on the fan on the radiator and it sucks out the hot air. There's two different, um, there's two speeds for the radiator fan. Uh, it kicks on automatically at low speed 
uh, during regular circulation when it gets to a certain threshold. And then if it really gets too hot, then it goes to the high speed. The previous owner had rigged it so you can turn it on and off with a switch so that it could turn on to the highest setting. But the circuit that they had set up bypassed the lower automatic on and off. So the fan never turned on when it would get hot. So that means I, I didn't have a fan on the radiator at all. So I took the system apart. I redid the circuitry. So now it automatically comes on for low and high. But then I also have an extra switch in case I want to turn the fan on high. Let's say if I'm waiting at a light or I just got off the highway, it's kind of hot and I'm stopped. I can turn that on and off. And I added the mount for the spare out in the back it's a swing away arm and i'm really happy about that one because i wanted to keep the whole front bottom clear where the spare usually goes mounted it's really hard to access everything that's in there with the clamshell that keeps the wheel in place uh also it's it's pretty heavy and every time i went in there when i was dealing with the cooling system or brakes uh it just made things very awkward and by moving the spare to the back of the van now that whole area is open and it's very easy to get to any of those systems uh in the front of the van so i added a roll away awning on the side for when we're camping as well as a solar panel in the front uh that's all going to the extra battery and then i did a lot of maintenance within the van i, I took a lot of the uh roof items off resealed everything packed everything up just to try to avoid water coming in as well as in the beginning i had also taken the entire inside of the van out resealed everything uh and put cleaned up all of the cabinets got rid of the pro the huge propane tank that half of it was rusting and i didn't know i mean i could restore it but i'm a little concerned and scared to restore that entire system so i'm just going to keep it off for now maybe convert this to use a small propane tank and i also for now sealed off all of those areas that allow you to connect the westie from the inside to the outside um there was just so much rust happening. I haven't addressed all the rust yet. I'm gonna leave that for later. I just wanted to take care of mechanical stuff first, and then later I'll deal with getting through the rust. But I, deal, I dealt with all of the rust that was inside the van. Now I need to deal with all the outside uh, rust later on at another time. One thing to mention is any restoration is gonna take money. And I knew that it was gonna be expensive to replace everything in the van so that's why i tried to keep as many parts as i could to try to keep the cost of the restoration down as much as possible but the other thing that i'll say is if i had to get all of these elements all at once it would have been tough and it would have been hard to think oh this is going to be a lot of money buying all these items but because it was over the course of a year uh i tried pushing things out on a monthly basis, let's say. Okay, so if I'm gonna get these aluminum tanks, I'll do this this month. And then next month I'll deal with suspension. And then next month I'll deal with. That way, if I broke it down into smaller things, it felt like I know that at some point many of these systems would break. And I was taking into consideration how much it would cost if I had to bring it into a shop to have them do it in terms of time and um, parts also trying to think of what the cost would be if during a vacation during a weekend during a week away uh if i'm ruining our family's plans because i didn't take care of this and it broke down i was also putting that into the cost of getting some of these items but i really wanted to put my money behind some of the pieces that i wanted to trust on the road so parts that were really important i tried going with the best i could find parts that weren't as important. Maybe I got secondhand. Uh, it, more than anything, it took so much time. Sometimes I would get into something and then it would take me two to three weeks to just get through uh, all the parts that needed cleaning or all the parts that needed uh, scraping down. And it was awesome that it was, it was all doable. If you're gonna do something like this, be prepared to spend so much more time than you think. Something that you think will take you a couple of hours or a weekend could take you a month if you, if you don't do all of the research ahead of time. This was a really long video, but then again, I've done a ton of work to this van. I can't believe it's running as well as it's running right now. 
but it's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to continue testing it, hopefully start doing short trips, and then eventually when I feel more comfortable, longer trips. But if there's anything in particular, any questions, anything you want to find out about, don't hesitate to shoot me a note if you have any tips on things that you've done and have worked for you. Also, please definitely leave a comment, shoot an email. So I hope that was enjoyable. Subscribe if you like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. And as always, look at Thank you for watching and see you next time.